Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make this bomb ass puffer jacket. So I used my own pattern for this and I'm going to show you how I did that. I used the length of the zip as a guide for the centre front of my pattern as you can see here. I used an old pattern piece in order to construct the pattern for my puffer jacket. You can use a jumper, an old jumper or a sweater in order to construct your pattern using your measurements. I can show you how to do that and if you want to see that make sure that you like the video and make sure that you comment down below and I will do that for you. Remember that the length of your zip is the same length as the front piece of your pattern, your neckband and your waistband. So take that into account when making your pattern pieces. In order to make the back pattern piece, I used a straight line as a guide. I took my front piece and stuck the bottom of that onto the straight line that I've just drawn, traced around the front piece. I had to then turn that over and then trace around the other side and that makes a complete back piece. I didn't want the back neck to be as low as the front neck so what I did is I found the middle points of the two shoulder points that I've just drawn using my front piece, found the middle point and measured one inch down and then joined that up using a curved edge ruler. I took one inch off at the shoulder as it was too wide so make sure that you use the correct shoulder width measurement in order to get the correct pattern piece. To make the pattern for the waistband I measured the bottom of the front piece times that by two, the bottom of the back piece and added those two measurements together and that will give me the total length of the waistband. What I did is I took that measurement, divided it by two and used that to make my pattern piece as this would be cut on the fold. Repeat the same process as the waistband for your wristband. Make sure that your arm can go through the wristband. Repeat the same process for your neckband. Remember that the width of your neckband will have been based on the length of your zip and taking into account your centre front piece, your waistband and your neckband. To make the sleeve, I trace around the armhole of my front pattern piece. I extended out from the top of that line that I've just drawn by the length of my shoulder to wrist measurement and I extended out from the bottom of the armhole line by my underarm to wrist measurement. The width at the bottom of the sleeve is my wrist measurement divided roughly by 2 plus seam allowance. I joined all these lines together in order to get a rough sleeve pattern. I used an old quilt cover to make my lining which I decided to do first as I wanted to make sure that the pattern fit and that everything was correct. So I cut out two of my front pattern pieces and one of my back piece. Once you're happy with the fit of your lining material or your lining pattern, repeat the same process for your fashion fabric.
So the next thing that you want to do is to cut out your wadding. So I use my back pattern piece to cut out double of my back pattern in wadding just to make sure that it was very warm. And I did the same principle for my two front pattern pieces. So I cut out four of my front pattern pieces in wadding and I repeated the same principle for my sleeve. However, I didn't double up on the sleeve as I didn't want it to be too bulky. It is possible to get lighter or heavier weights in wadding, so check with your local fabric store. It will save you time in doubling up on the wadding if you get a heavier weight. So check for different alternatives. The next thing you want to do is draw lines across all your pattern pieces onto the wadding, equal distances apart, in order to make your puffer jacket puffy. The next thing you want to do is sew across all those lines so on the sleeves on the front pattern pieces and also on your back pattern pieces be careful when sewing with the wadding as it can get stuck in your machine so just take your time when sewing when all your sewing is done it will look something like this the next thing that you want to do is to pin right sides together your front and back pieces. I like to use clips especially when working with thick fabrics as it's easier to hold patterns and materials together. So along the side seams and the shoulder seams. The next thing I did was to add pockets. This was a last minute addition so it wasn't actually included in the making of my pattern. So what I did was took a little bit of fabric, folded that over and then folded it over again in order to end up with four pieces for the pockets. I measured how big I wanted the pockets to be and proceeded to cut out squares big enough to fit my hand. I cut out two pieces of the wadding in the same shape as the pockets but making each wadding piece a centimetre smaller on each edge. I took two of the pocket pieces and proceeded to sew along one edge of the pocket pieces wrong size together so it looks like this. The next thing you want to do is encase the wadding within the pocket piece that you just made and pin. Place the pockets onto the preferred section on the front of your jacket with the sewn edge facing up so facing towards the top of your jacket and pin your pockets using a 0.5cm seam allowance of the unsewn edges. Leave the top sewn edge open, do not pin. Sew along the left hand side, the bottom and the right hand side of the pocket leaving the top edge open. Sew each sleeve right sides together along the open edge using a 0.5cm seam allowance. The next thing you need to do is pin your sleeves to the body of your jacket. So you need to match the side seam of your jacket with the bottom seam of your sleeves by inserting the sleeve within the armhole of the jacket as you can see here and pin all around the armhole. I use clips as I've mentioned as they're easier to use. So around the armhole using a 0.5 seam allowance. Once it's done it will look something like this. Now we're going to work on the waistband. So you want to cut the waistband as I mentioned on the fold.
cut a strip of elastic two inches shorter than your waistband length and attach this to your waistband fabric now this bit is a little bit fiddly as you have to stretch the elastic as you pin so that it matches up perfectly as you'll see in a little bit this will involve using a lot of my body limbs so yeah it is what it is Find the halfway point of your jacket waistband and the halfway point of your waistband and attach those two together by pinning and then match across all along the waistband to pin your elastic waistband to the jacket. Again, I'll be using my limbs to hold it down so that the stretch is perfect. For the neckband cut one piece of fashion fabric, one piece of wooden material and one piece of the liner fabric if you haven't done so already. Pin or clip the neckband to the neckline of your jacket right sides together and sew along the neckline. For your wrist cuffs you can either use a rib knit fabric or make your own encasing using your fashion fabric and the elastic however you want to have four inch wide strips of material using your wrist measurement and then once that's done sew along the edge and fold that over. Place the cuffs over the wrist of the jacket and match the seams of the sleeves and of the wrist cuffs with the raw edges facing out and sew along that join. Take your time when sewing the wrist as you're working with quite a small space so just take it slowly. So guys, I forgot to film putting the zip on and actually it was very fiddly but essentially what I've done is place the zip with the teeth out facing outwards onto the first layer which is the fabric and fold it over into the teeth and then pinned and this is just the top layer of the fabric <laughs> 